Serendipity House in New Hampshire. I'm so excited to see you all today. We're gonna use the other new paint inlay today. Who's used this? This one is called Rose Chintz. And um, what I thought I would do, three wood trays. It's a nesting set that I have just from a craft shop. And we're gonna do three different looks with the Rose Chintz inlay sheets when they come out. You see how it's not all the way to the edge there? If you don't take that off, your um, pattern's not gonna line up. Uh, if you wanna line it up, we're actually not gonna be needing to line up a pattern today because our piece isn't that big, but I am always gonna cut these off and get into the habit of removing that edge. Um, this is what I have, but a circular cutter I think works best. I need to dig mine out somewhere. Uh, see, because it wouldn't do that with that just did, which it pulled. And maybe my blade's not super tight and that's why it did that. So you just cut that edge off there. So I'm just gonna like see which one of the grid lines comes closest to cut and it's this one here. So I'm gonna cut right across there. And then we're gonna trim it in the other direction. Uh, I am using um, a wise owl varnish for this one. I've already tested it, it works great, but the timing is key. Here's how my paint lay is gonna go in. Other tip is don't put them in upside down. So I'm gonna remove them just the way I need to put them back in. And then we're gonna do our varnish. Shake it up a little bit since I've got it in a FIFO. I'm just gonna pour it directly on and spread it out. All right, so this dries clear. I probably put way too much of that on there. And I am just gonna put it right flat in there. You do have a little bit of time if you need to move the paper over a little bit. Lay this right in. Okay, so that's on there good. I am gonna get a little bit of water. I'm gonna spritz it on lightly and I have my, um, my IOD brayer, which is what is gonna push it down. I am just pressing that right in and basically what this is doing, it is pre it's pressing um, the inlay which has fresh, pigments on it. It's like somebody just painted this and gave you paint on a, on a piece of paper, kind of. And that is going to go right down into my varnish. I'm going to put this aside. We're going to start the next one because um, this one needs to sit for 10 minutes or so. Number two, this one has been painted white and sealed. And this isn't part of uh, this tutorial, but I just, this is tannins bleeding through. So if you ever um, do a light color on wood and you get this yellowing, it's because it needed to have a primer on it first to block the tannins. I don't care about that on this. This is the underlayer because here's what I'm going to show you. We're going to use a different color on top of this. I'm going to go a little more light handed here. <laughs> And I'm going to show you how to get some of the white showing through. I guess I should have measured my paper first, but I didn't. My mind is in a million different places when I'm talking, you guys. All right, so this is a clay chalk base paint. You could put it on as thickly as you want. All it's going to do is affect the dry time. Uh, on the piece of furniture that I did with the indigo lay, inlay, I put this on super thick, okay? And it took longer to dry, but you can see all of my brush strokes. Like I basically had it on like this kind of a, oops, speaking of which, I don't know why I don't want that white. I'm not gonna do it quite as thick now because I want, I want it to pull off and I wanna use the piece that we pull off on the third tray. If all goes as planned. All right. And this one, honestly, this paint has no polymers. That's probably thick enough. I kind of, I'm going to show you the wrinkle effect. Um, so this one seems to grab the inlays super fast. 
So your paint needs to stay wet. Now, if I walk away from this and I forget and it's not wet, all I have to do is spritz it with water, okay? So you just need to make sure it stays. And like I said, I did not make sure. This is what happens when you talk too fast and you are not paying attention. So it's best to cut first, obviously. Alrighty, I'm gonna drop this right in. And this one, let's see, am I gonna be able to, this will match, I've got a little bit missing there and I'm just gonna fudge it. Cause here's what we're gonna do with this. This one, I am going to purposely put wrinkles in. I'm squeezing it together. I want wrinkles and folds, textured. All right, I'm not gonna, there we go. I'm, I'm doing those on purpose. Now you can decide if you like it or don't like it, but it's a, another technique. Now, can you see how I've got that is obviously laid differently a little bit than the first one I did, and it's gonna be a different look. And I think because, oh, did I just do that upside down? And we have a window of forgiveness. No, did I? I did, okay but it doesn't really matter because here I go, I'm gonna wrinkle. And I'm gonna wrinkle. And you're gonna see all of those wrinkles in there. Damp in the back. Now it's important to have a bottle that is going to like lightly spray. Even though I have the wrinkles, I'm still gonna go in and do this. And basically I am putting those creases I'm right into my textured paint. I probably should have started with this one because I want to reuse this piece. But I think it's going to grab quickly. That's going to sit aside and dry for a minute. Let's see if I can figure out how to not keep getting my, <laughs> my hands covered in paint. And we're going to check the varnish one. And we're going to pull up just a little test piece. Um, I don't want this to dry all the way because if I do, basically I think I'm gonna have uh, like a decoupaged upside down paint inlay. So let's grab a corner here and see if it's sat long enough. Let's see. And it is coming off, okay. Love it. This is like, this is the best part. Here we go. So that's over varnish. You should only have to tug a little bit. Your paper, the paper's nice and strong, so it's not gonna rip. What do you think? Oh, I love it over, look at the uh, texture it pulled, it's uh, showing on the board. It's beautiful over this wood. Beautiful. All right, so there we go, there is there it is over wood. This is the tray, tray that has the white underneath and the bluish color on top. Let's see uh, if this is ready. Again, we're rushing. This could sit overnight and you could come back and wet the paper and pull it off with this kind of paint that doesn't have polymers. It could sit overnight because you can reactivate it. I can't do that with a varnish because it will completely just dry. Okay, this is good. Now the paper's still damp, that's why I didn't re-dampen it to take it off. I'm gonna use these in a minute on our next tray. See all that white? All that white is the white underneath from the wrinkles and because of um, the texture in the paint. There we go. Now, I'm gonna put this aside for a minute. I did do this wrong, but I'll show you how to blend this in. I'm gonna put these papers right down on another board. This is like cowboy, it inlays for cowboys because um, these should dry, but I know it's gonna work this way because I've done it. So I'm white paint right on the board 
And we're going to use that other one for a second time. And the reason I chose that color is because part of that blue that is stuck on here from the first time is going to come off and show up on the white on this one. And that's what I love about it. So this still has got plenty of life left in it. Is it going to fit? It might just fit without using the other one. It's going to end up getting distressed, so I don't, it's okay if it didn't go all the way to the edge. Spray a little bit of water on there. Use the brayer to press it in. Back to this one. Let's get, let's see, a little bit of water. I just want to show you how you can move that. Um, but then also I'm going to dry it and we're going to go ahead and distress this with a piece of sandpaper before sealing. Okay. Because it turns out that when I did that by accident on my very first project, I loved it. It was, <laughs> I was instructing and then I went, whoops. And come to find out, huh. all right, there we go. So if you just dip in a little bit of water, it's going to move your paint. But I think the distress part is what's going to be. So you can add your own paint. You could do whatever you want. But, but right here is where I didn't line up. See, it's, it's transferring a little bit of pink there, which I'm actually, I'm just going to distress. But if you want to know how to do this if you accidentally get seams or you didn't line up 320 grit sandpaper so you want to use a high grit i'm going to go gentle now let me just say before this if you do not want any of these colors to run into the color that you painted this is the time where you do your half sealer half water if you want to see what's going to happen or if you want a little bit of color running like i'm going to show you this is when you sand let's hope it's dry enough all right, so we have this paint. I'm going to go with the grain. But see how the paint is still active. And so it's spreading the pigment. This I discovered by working too quickly and forgetting to seal first. And I actually really like the look. I feel like it softens the background up a little bit. Um, whereas if, if you do it afterwards, uh, it softens up your inlay, but it doesn't make the color run. All right, that's probably enough there. Now I'm going to uh, actually move this to the floor and kind of pound it dust off and blow it. And now I'm going to take a dry towel because I don't want to, I don't want to smudge it, like wipe it off, smudge it. All right, so yeah, that's very distressed. So I'm gonna use the varnish. And then we have to quickly get back to the other inlay we put in, I think, because it's drying. My gosh, have I not done like a lot in a half an hour, you guys? I just looked at the clock and I'm... Wow, look at that, come alive. I love it. I love the white in the background. Look at that texture. Look at that texture. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love it. It'll dry, uh, not streaky. And what do you think? I love the dimension of doing it this way. Okay, let's get back to this one. This is the second time with this paper. Um, I am going to, let's just see, oh boy. Hmm, I don't know if my paint, this is not ready to lift. This is not ready to lift. It's lifting my paint up. Okay, so I guess I can't rush everything. 
So if you take your, if you pull back and it's pulling back all of your paint and not leaving anything, it's not time. So um, I, I can't lift that for you now. I guess that's kind of the chance of, the chance you take with, so that needs to sit longer. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna recap what I did. So this is uh, the rose chintz inlay on uh, over the wood, straight over the wood with varnish. This is over white paint uh, and then with dried white paint. And then I use this blue color and I, you can see, look at that, where I really pushed it together to wrinkle it. And all of those wrinkles basically made impressions in the paint and show the color uh, of the paint underneath. Um, and then I distressed this and the color did bleed a little bit. It's not as neat. Um, I distressed it before I seal. This is the second use uh, of this uh, inlay and we'll see how this comes out. I need to let this, it's really, really wet right now. So I need to let this dry for a couple of hours. All right, guys, um, I'll see you guys. I'll post uh, all of these when they're done and dry. Have fun with your inlays. Have an awesome day. I'm here. Hey.